Alright, hello, welcome back to part two of my World Championships of Warhammer recap. Uh, today I'm going to go through um, day two, where we played three games. Um, <clears throat> so the format was, I don't know, I don't know how much I went over this in the first uh, video, because that was a couple days ago. I have the memory of a goldfish. Um, but we were playing five games the first two days uh, in our pool, in our group. Um, so they split us into four pools of about 22 people. Um, each pool had about 10 people from the US and the rest were from elsewhere. And as long as it was mathematically possible you know, within our records, um, they were trying to match us not with people from the same country. Um, I ended up playing a few people from the US. Um, fine. Um, but the, the first day we did two games uh, and we had four hour rounds for that actually. Um, they were not doing chess clocks or anything. There was no no real time limit but like the judges were coming around and making sure we were on track and playing fast enough. Um, so then day two, uh, Friday, we had three rounds and they were three hour rounds instead of four hour rounds since we had three rounds. So that is what I'll go through today. Uh, and then on Saturday, uh, we had two rounds. So after the groups, um, the top two from each group were in the bracket to try and win the whole thing um, as best general. Uh, and that was a double elimination bracket. So they played up to like 10 or 11 games. Uh, but all of the rest of us in the, in the world's bracket um, finished the weekend out with uh, three more games. So we played two more on Saturday and one more on Sunday. Um, and then we were... Sunday, or sorry, Saturday, we were playing like our first game. We had, I don't know, my opponent and I both thought, thought we had four hour rounds since it was two games again. And like the judges were like real, like real on us about like, are you hitting your milestones? You're playing fast enough, play it, blah, blah, blah. And we're like, why are you, like, we have two games today. Why are you rushing? And it turns out the schedule did say we had three hour rounds on Saturday just by having two games, but they, uh, they ended up changing it because <laughs> that was silly. Um, so we, we ended up not being in a rush on Saturday. Um, but anyway, uh, so my game three, my first game on Friday, was against Frederick Schmidt. Um, that's not his list. There we go. Probably the most enthusiastic about Warhammer human being I've ever met. Um, all weekend, Frederick was like trying to organize people to play more games after <laughs> the tournament games were over and like play doubles and things um mostly i think everyone else was like dude we're playing like eight to 12 games of warhammer this weekend already <laughs> kind of want to do something else um but man fred fred just wanted to play warhammer all the time and does want to play warhammer all the time so good for him good for them um anyway fred was playing sylvaneth and Harvest Boon, uh, Bell Casting Zavant, and the Dwindling, which was, I think, reroll a cast or a dispel roll, unbind roll every turn. If I remember right, Harvest Boon is the pregame move for all of the, the bugs. Um, so you had two branch witches. Um, I thought it was a little odd, but they're acolytes, so not that odd in this uh, GHB. Uh, and a Tree Lord Ancient with the Vesperal Gem, which, oh my god, is so much better than I thought it was. I thought I thought Vesperal Gem was a once-per-game autocast and can't be dispelled. I did not realize it is a once-per-turn autocast, which is nuts. Um, way better than I thought. Uh, but anyway, uh, so that's the characters. Uh, and then it was six Revenant Seekers, so these are the ones that can bring a model back. Uh, and they have Ren 2 attacks on the guy up top. Oh, it is two damage, right. They're, all uh, all the bugs, all the riders have ran two, but the seekers are two damage, the riders, the lancers are one damage, that's the difference. Um, the six of the, the revenants, two by three spite rider lancers, five tree revenants, which, again, I don't know if I've ever faced tree revenants. I've played Sylvan Death once or twice. Um, not realize I can just teleport every turn. They're real good. Uh, I think as long as they have the the, the Piper. Uh, and then a Spice from Hive, Awaken Wildwood, and Six Hunters with Great Swords. Um, we were playing on Gmetic Pulse. So this was the um, 
layout. Um, I'm not, I lost this game. I'm not really sure what I should have done to win it. <laughs> it seems like a very hard matchup. Especially because, um, the annoy. well, I mean, this, this might have been honestly the whole story here, is we were playing on one of the tables that had wild woods in the middle. Um, so pretty much anywhere I set up my line across the board, he was going to be able to go in and then teleport away out, you know, with a tree, um, with strike and fade. So if we had played one of the maps with the impassables in the middle instead of the, the Wildwoods, maybe it would have been a little better for me. I don't know. Um, but he, you know, he set up his, his free woods and then like turn one, he summoned another woods. There were just wild woods like all across the center, covering, you know, touching every point, um, which was bad. <laughs> and then, really, the story of this. Well, let's see. We both got three points first turn. We both did magic dominance because we were out of range of each other with at least something. Um, turn two, he did surround and destroy. So I got to pick where the um where the pulse came in i don't it didn't i don't think it really ended up mattering i put it over here on the left um maybe i should have played even harder to that side but i was hoping to mainly play for the middle ones on like turns three four um i got i got blown up so it doesn't matter <laughs> it didn't really matter where it ended up coming in um but so he got he was you know he was very mobile he had his pregame move that he went out and tagged a couple points, and these things all move like 12 or 14 or something. Um, so he could get to whichever side it was going to be on anyway, plus the teleporting with the Wildwoods and all that. Like, he was going to get to whichever side had the point on it. Um, so he did Surround turn two for six points. I did Sneak Up and only got four points. Um, then, let's see, turn three he did Eradicate. I don't recall the exact wording on that one. It, I think it's either kill a unit. I think it's kill a unit that's near a tree, not an objective. But I had moved up the Hobgrotz, I think, to take this point back and like screen. And so we just killed the Hobgrotz. I'm very bad at there's there's a few books that have book tactics that are like kill a unit that's on an objective or kill a unit that's near the trees or kill a unit that's near the altar in corn and stuff like that. And I'm very bad about remembering all of those and not just like putting my Hobgrats in a place to give the enemy a free battle tactic. So that is something that I need to um, need to do a little better at. So that's the point of improvement for me to think about. Um, and that's you know, part of that is just experience and knowing all the armies and knowing what book tactics they have. So good prep to do. Um, I did. It surprises me. <laughs> Clearly, I don't remember all of this game because turn three, I did bait and trap, and I didn't recall that I had multiple units alive in combat at any point here <laughs> to retreat with. Uh, so I guess I did. Um, so I got four points turn three. Um, turn four, he did harness, whatever the paths, something. Got to use, got to play his army basically to do do some tree teleporty things. Um, and got four points. Um, I got five when I did Intimidate that turn. And I think I think at that point, most of my army was dead, so Intimidate was pretty easy, although it is the short deployment zones of the Geopulse, so maybe that's why Intimidate was easy. Um, and then turn five, he got six points again. I didn't even write down what tactic he did, but I, did, I got zero because my army was basically dead at that point. Um, so he out, you know, he he got the pulse turns two and three, and was already up four points going to turn four, and then um, he did outscore him by one turn four, but then my whole army was dead, <laughs> so it didn't matter. Um, so basically, the story of this game was him doing strike and fade to just kill one thing and then bail out before I could retaliate, and then really go in for the kill once I was weakened up from that. It was a very frustrating game for me because I never really got, like, I never really got 
the Bolt Boys in range of a good target. I never really got to do like a good combo charge and do Cruel Boys Wog. Um, I never never really got in range to blow up anything with um, uh, Blizzard. So this guy, I, I, I think one of the mistakes I made, I if I was going to bring the Pulse in over here, I should have set the Blizzard guy up over there knowing we were going to fight over those for the, a couple turns. Um, for these objectives on the left, um, so I could have deployed a little better in that regard. I didn't. I didn't quite set up my castle in the best way that I could have. Um, but yeah, it was. It was. It was a very frustrating game. Not because I mean, Fred. Fred is great. It was a frustrating army to play against because you know he he had his his wizards on the back line back here and the tree lord and the Kurnoth like back way back. So I couldn't really get to them with the bolt boys or anything in combat. And like, you know, the Karnoth hunters were in front, but they were three inches into the trees. And so like, even if I was in range, I couldn't really shoot them. So I could shoot, you know, whatever. I could try and kill these lancers and stuff, but he was moving around and staying out of range and staying behind trees and teleporting around. Um, he, I think like turn one, he went in and he just like sniped the kill bow and teleported back out. I think turn two, he kind of did the same thing. Well, I moved the Hobgrots up, so like he killed the Hobgrots. He like maybe sniped something over here. Um, oh, and there was actually one thing I messed up that could have made a difference, which was he made... Um, so eventually he did come out of this bubble here, and he set up... I forget if he summoned another Wildwood over here, but he basically set up the Kurnoth Hunters surrounding the Tree Lord Ancient over on this side, so I couldn't charge the Hunters or anything without also getting the Tree Lord into combat. Um, so they kind of committed to this flank once the Pulse came up over there, and I had, had kind of lined up in front of this point, like touching this point, and I had the Nash Tooth over on the flank. Um, and he, the turn he teleported over here, and he set up nine inches away from the Nash Tooth, and he rolled the nine, so he made a nine inch charge onto the Nash Tooth with all the Kurnoth Hunters. Um, and I forgot, despite having put something up on this piece of terrain to remind me, like a little note, um, I forgot that Buggy Mist was up, so he needed a 10. So he shouldn't have made that charge, but <laughs> I, I forgot. Um, so he made the charge in and he killed the Nash Tooth and just like kind of bounced back out. Um, and then the turn... At some point he committed like the Tree Lord and the Kurnoth, I think, into this flank and pretty much wiped everything. Like he got he got this 10-man unit of um, Gut Rippers, he got the Sludge Raker, I think he got, let's see, this is like the aftermath picture. He must have gotten, maybe he got, no, he never got a double turn. Um, he must have gotten the Bolt Boys with the Hunters too, or maybe the maybe the Tree Lord had gotten them and bounced back out. Oh no, I think he got, never mind, I think he got Seekers into the back too here. So he got, he got something, he got the, he got some bug unit also, I think. Uh, I think a small unit of um, lancers into the into my back as well. So so yeah, this is the uh, this is like the aftermath turn picture where obviously the game is over. I just have some gut rippers left on this point. Um, I believe I had gotten Godspreck up into the middle and then charged it over here to help try and clear some lancers. Which obviously did not um, go as planned. I did not get them. Um, so yeah, it, I just. I was just very outmaneuvered in this game. I didn't quite know how to deal with the speed and the teleporting and all of that stuff um, because he could, you know, he could come in and kill something and then teleport out of retaliation range essentially. And that's that's kind of like my whole game plan with this army. A lot of the time is use my screens, uh, you know, use the hobgrots, use the gut ripas to absorb the hit from whatever the enemy's strong thing is that they want to kill me with, and then retaliate with the Bolt Boys and Sludge Raker and you know, all the other stuff. So, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure there's something I could have done to play this better, but I don't know what it was. So I ended up losing 28 to 16 because um, he also got his Grand Strat and I didn't. Um, so well played, Fred.
I lost that one. The good news is this was the day that I won the games. <laughs> so the next game uh, was against Duncan Bills um, with Lumina. Um, Duncan and his brother Dean, uh, I've been, a, been familiar with their names at least for like, I don't know, two decades <laughs> or so. Um, I just, I remember my friends knew them back in the day uh, in Warhammer Fantasy from going to tournaments, and then also I think from Malifo. Um, so yeah, I knew the I knew the Bills brothers' names, but I don't know if I'd ever actually met them. So it was good to play Duncan. Finally, um, he was playing Emetrica, a Lumineth list, uh, which is just a great matchup for me because their whole thing is ignoring Rend One and Rend Two, and my whole thing is doing Mortal Wounds. So I was like, sweet. Uh, finally, like I got paired into a match that I think is a really good matchup for me. Maybe I can win a game. <laughs> this was on Nexus Collapse, which is always interesting. Um, yeah, that's kind of a mid-game picture. I'll pull that up in a minute. Um, but anyway, his list was a Stone Mage, an Enlightener, Avalanor, a Lore Seeker, Alania and Elithor, um, the, the special character, the Uniques. Um, 10 stone guard, 5-5, five, 2-5 five, five stone guard, a tree rev ally, um, which are useful because of the teleport, um, and a unit of 5 dawn riders, and then um, grave tide, gnashing jaws, root of petrifaction. So that's the list. Um, so I didn't, I didn't notice, um, like I had looked at his list, but then, you know, I was looking at his army that he had set up. Um, ready to deploy, and I was like, just looking at it, and he was like, oh, do you have any questions? I'm like, you know, mainly I was like, you you ignore Rend, right? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, alright, I think, think I get it, mainly. Um, should have asked, slash, I forgot that the Lore Seeker was in the list. I should have, I should have just had him go over his list, period. <laughs> Even if I was like, oh, I think I know what Emetrica does. Because um, I totally missed that the Lore Seeker was in the list. And that it had Blizzard, and I also didn't know what Lore Seeker does, honestly. Um, so after we after we deployed and we all set up, um, I I didn't realize he had a Lore Seeker, and I didn't realize I had Blizzard. So he was just like he pops it down in the middle, you know, behind my castle in the middle of my army. I was like, what? Excuse me? Like what? What are you doing? What is this guy? Like, oh, it's the Lore Seeker. I'm like, how far does he have to be away to deploy? Because all I knew about the Lore Seeker, I was like, oh, I know he like holds objectives really well or something. He was like, oh, yeah, you can just deploy outside of three of you anywhere. Like, okay, cool. Uh, I kind of wish I had known that. Like, <laughs> I was kind of salty about it because he has Blizzard or whatever. Um, he, Blizzard ended up not being the problem. But I was like a little salty because I was just like, I did not, I didn't know you had like a, whatever. I didn't know you had a Deep Striker guy. Um, I especially didn't know he could, he could deploy within three or outside of three inches instead of nine. I just, I didn't, I didn't know he had a lower seeker in the army. I just like, didn't see it when I was looking at, I didn't notice it when I was looking at the list of it or his models or whatever. Um, so I was, I was a little too salty, I was saltier than I should have been about this. Um, but I was a little bit annoyed, um, cause I didn't realize it was there. So, uh, Anyway, like I said, this is Nexus Collapse. Despite that, I was like, you know, this is a good matchup for me. Hopefully I can still win. Um, this is corner deployment. So so basically the lore seeker. Um, you can see what happened. Basically, I was, you know, I was all here. I had guys in the garrison. I had the bull boys in the garrison. And um, he deployed the lore seeker, like, basically where this bag is, this corner. Oh, you can't see it. Hold on. Um, Basically, deployed the lore seeker down here. Move myself back down now. Um, and so he took first turn, and instead of blizzarding something, he cast the um, uh, root of petrifaction in the middle of my army. And much like the, um, uh, what is it? Much like the uh, sigil of Zinch, this is something that goes off in the movement phase, but it goes off at the start of movement phase and the end of move phase. So since it was his turn, he got to double tap everything in my army with this stupid rune of petrifaction. And I was real, real sad about this. 
Luckily, he did not roll super hot with it. So he like, I mean, you can see in this picture, he ended up doing like four wounds to two Swamp Call of Shamans. He did one to another one. I think he killed two of the six Bolt Boys, but didn't do any damage to the small Bolt Boys. I think they were out of range. And then he did a few to the Sledge Raker, um, maybe just barely enough to bracket him. Uh, and a couple, if he killed a few, um, killed a few gut rippers. I think he did a couple wounds to the Nash tube. He did a few wounds to Gobsprack. Um, so he basically wounded everything, but didn't didn't actually finish anything off with that. And um, so anyway, so his turn, his turn one, he actually tried. Right, he tried the battle tactic to have two endless spells on the board at the end of the turn, and he failed it, because he got this Rune of Petrifaction out, but then um, his other casters up here, I think he either failed to cast or miscast um, the one of the other ones, and then I think the last one I dispelled with Gobsprack, maybe, and probably did a couple wounds to his, his wizard. Um, and he also, was it this early? All right. It, I don't know if it was this turn. It was either this turn or the next turn, but <laughs> one of the, one of the funny things that happened in this game, I should have written out when exactly this happened. Um, this may have been turn one already. Um, yeah, I think maybe what happened is Gobsprite dispelled the first one. And did a couple wounds, did some wounds to the wizard who tried to cast it. And then I think the stone mage tried to cast the next one and primal miscast it. I think he failed to cast it, so he had to roll primal at it for the battle tactic. And he primal miscast it, and both the stone mage and the enlightener died in one turn to his own casting. So that was a great, um, that was a great start for him. <laughs> And then the Dawn Riders that turn also failed to cast Speed of Hish on themselves, so like they didn't get way over. I think I think all this happened turn two. I think turn one he just failed to get the two endless spells out. I think the wizards blowing up was turn two, if I'm remembering right. Um so, so anyway, um since this is Nexus Collapse, the person going into every turn after the second turn, uh sorry, every battle round after the second, um, uh, starting with the second battle round. Gets to pick two things to the person who has less points gets to pick two objectives to explode and have them go away. So I had set up to not outscore him turn one. I wanted to be able to pick his two back objectives because he's like slow and stuff, and you know make him make him have to come to me to get points. So I had set so I had set up so that everything nothing was on this point, uh, my my right point. I had stuff on my left point, but like nothing was touching the right point. So that pre-game, I only had one objective. So if he did a battle tactic and had two objectives, you know, he was going to get five and outscore me. But basically, if he had, what well, he he did not set up to deny himself getting points. He he was on two objectives from the start. I was only on one, so I was like, cool. He's going to get his battle tactic and like I'll outscore him, and then I'll get to pick to blow things up. And then he fails his battle tactic. <laughs> So I was like, all right, I mean, it's good that you failed your battle tactic for me, but I really set up expecting you to outscore me. So on my turn, I was like, well, if I do a battle tactic, I'm already at three points. Like, I might as well just take my five, I guess, at this point, and he'll blow up some objectives and, like, whatever. Like, what, what can you do? <laughs> I, I'd rather just take my five points at that point uh, rather than only take one by not doing a battle tactic was like the only way to guarantee I had less. Um, so I, I took, I took my two points. Um, and then I think I took this one in the bottom that turn I did surround and destroy, right? I had, um, I think I moved Hobgrotz down to the left flank with super sneaky just to set up a surround and destroy. If I'm remembering right. Um, Oh, it was either that. It was either that or a super sneaky gobs wreck just to make sure I was in dispel range. This, this might have been the game I did that. Um, regardless, um, the moral of the story is I did surround and destroy. 
but I did some guys over here. Um, these hobgrots are awfully far up there. Maybe I did soup sneak the hobgrots. But hobgrots up there had whatever. I had other I had people places. <laughs> I, I I had enough to do sound surround and destroy. Um, so I got that. I got five points. Um, his turn, he did surround and destroy. So he had. I don't know what was on the left flank over here. Um, oh, right. He has the tree revenants that can teleport. So he had the tree revenants teleport over there. He had the Dawn Riders come over here to get this. Um, this is like turn three or four of this picture. So he had Dawn Riders come over to this flank. He had the tree revs teleport down into my corner. You can see one sword from a tree revenant down here. Um, and then he had, yeah, he had something in his back, back table edge. Um, so he got five that turn, because he took one, two, he had taken this with the Tree Revenants, and then, is that all he needed? He may have taken this one with like Avalon or something. So I think I had had these three, he took one, two, three back from me, I guess this one didn't matter. Anyway, he got five points. My turn, I got um, Bait and Trap because I believe the Dawn Riders had charged the Hop Rats over here to get into Surround and Destroy range of this edge. Um, so they had charged them, but not killed the Hop Rats, so they could they could retreat out. And then I think maybe something was in combat with the Tree Revenants. I don't remember what my other bait and trap was. Um, but I got four points that turn. Maybe this is... Mm, this might be post turn two, turn three. Anyway, I charged, I believe that was the turn I charged the Nash Tooth into the Dawn Riders. I charged something else. Um, I straight up exploded Avalonar. So I, I think I just killed Avalonar with shooting. I think I got a decent, um, maybe I didn't get a decent kill bow shot off because I don't see it here. Maybe the kill bow died to the root of petrifaction earlier. Oh, <laughs> the big mistake I made was. Uh, in my turn, I forgot to dispel this at the start of the hero phase, like a dumbass. So I took a third hit at the start of the movement phase to everything. And luckily, again, it didn't like, this is, you, you see here what it did. So it didn't kill everything. And um, then I moved away. And so it just didn't matter anymore. Because it didn't go off in the end of the move phase because everything moved away. Um, and sorry, he also, he blew up my two objectives. Um, turn two, and it just killed, like, nothing. The, the, I think he, he just, like, didn't roll any of the four-ups, basically, and it didn't kill anything. I think that might have been what did the one wound of the shaman, but he didn't, he didn't, like, he didn't get bolt boys with that. He didn't, he didn't do anything with that. Uh, so that was disappointing for him. He had, you know, he had, he had all of these AoE, D, you know, four-up, do D3 mortal wound things, and it just, like, it had the chance to cripple my army, <laughs> and it didn't. So I got a bit lucky there. Um, but yeah, he had moved up Avalonar, like, to here, I think. And I just blew him up um, pretty easily. I think... I don't remember now if it was just with shooting or if, like, the gut rhythms had to go in or something. Um, but I blew up Avalonar. That was kind of simple. Um, I may have charged, I may have also charged these tree revenants down here with like gobsprack or something. Um, but anyway, you can see I, I cleaned up the tree revs down here. I cleaned up the um, dawn riders that were up here. I killed Avalonar with all my mortal wounds. Um, two of his wizards had blown themselves up. So he was in like some dire straits here. So he had five stone guard over here. He had his 10 stone guard up here, and he had Hilaria, whatever their name is. Um, oh, also, obviously, I killed the, the Lord Seeker. That was down here. Um, so he was, he was hurting on board presence, for sure. Um, turn three, he blew up. I think he blew up this one that Gobsrack is on, but he didn't blow up this one because I think the tree revs were on it. Um, so I probably took that one back at some point. Probably blew it up turn four or something. Um, 
but yeah, the, the the moral of the story for the rest of the game here is like he had slow units of stone guard left that wasn't going to be able to deal with me and Valeria, whatever her name is. So I was just like, all right, I need to kill. Um, I just need to kill two more of his units to get my grand strat and like outscore him. Um, I did not realize. So I was like, all right, stone guard have a four up ward on objectives. I was like, I can get gobs back over and turn that off or something, but like, it'll be a little hard to kill them. They are, they are pretty tanky. Um, I did not realize he told me the stone guard ward is only, I'm going to, I mean, I believe him. He plays the army, but I want to go read it myself. The stone guard ward is only if you control the objective that they're on. So I was, um, I, I kind of accidentally <laughs> did a good thing where I um, I moved enough of these gut rippers onto the point to take it from him in my turn and didn't charge in because um, I was just like I gotta hold this point I I would rather you like you know come in and whatever I don't I I didn't charge that turn for whatever reason and um, so when I go to <laughs> fight the stone guard. Like, oh, you're going to have your fork ward. Um, oh, and it's only against mortal wounds. Ah, uh, okay. All right, so the stone guard... <laughs> reading rules is great. So the stone guard rule is it has a four-up ward against mortal wounds, not against all things, while it's contesting an objective that you control. And, of course, they are a four-up save that ignores Ren 1 or 2 in a metrica. So that is not... Honestly, it's not that tanky. They're two wounds each. Not that... It's not that tanky. Anyway, <laughs> point of all that is, um, at the point that I was actually fighting the Stone Guard, I had taken this point from him already, so he didn't have the four board versus mortals. Um, the special character duo, um, they did a little bit of work, so they they were actually pretty they're actually pretty killy, and they have the thing they can like hop into combat and then like teleport out uh, after combat at the end of the phase. Um, they have like a one use only shooting attack that hit pretty hard. He did he killed something with it. So like th they were bouncing around and killing a couple things, but like it wasn't enough because I was gonna come in and just kill everything. Um, so scoring it out, let's see. After turn two, I was up nine to eight. Turn three, we both did intimidate and we both scored five. Turn four, I did let into the maelstrom, so that was the turn I went in. Um, with a couple things, and scored five. He did ignore the odds. It's a Lumineth one, and I forget what it does. Um, I think he got that. He got two points that turn, so I think he got his battle tactic and no objectives, maybe. I believe the Nash Tooth went in to kill Stoneguard. Um, and then turn five, he got... Um, conserve Aether Quartz, so that's a pretty easy freebie um, for Lumineth to just not use Aether Quartz that turn. <laughs> so he got four points that turn, and then I tried to do Reprisal that turn, and I believe I failed, because I think, what was it? I think Alania, Elethor, whatever their names are, I think they had killed the Sludge Raker, maybe with like the little shooting attack. And I tried to kill them and just didn't quite get them. But I had killed everything else. I, I scored two that turn, so... Like, how do I get... Did we both have two? Oh, I think I had one and more. I think there was, like, one... I think there was, like, one objective left that, that was not destroyed. So I think I got one objective, which was more. So I got two points. And then I obviously got my Grand Strat, because I killed almost everything in his army. And I won 19 to 24 me. So I was like, alright, I can I can relax a little bit. I won I won a game. <laughs> I'm not I'm not going totally um, zero wins this tournament, which is great. So that was a little bit of a load off my mind going into the next game. Um, which I don't have the list for it. Um, so I got matched into Josh Bennett. Um, who had to leave due to some family emergency thing. Um, but he had to leave, uh, which meant I played a substitute local guy, um, Dave, who was playing Trug's Trugherd. Um, 
so it was fun to I had not played against the Trug army yet. Um, so it was fun to play against that, but he was not somebody who had like qualified and won a GT and blah blah blah. He was like the local who was nice enough to step up and um, and help out and sub in. Um, but you know, probably a, a bit easier of a game than anybody else that I could have played. Um, that's not throwing any shade at him. It's just he's not somebody who qualified for the World Championships. Um, just a fact. <laughs> Um, so I don't, because he, because he was a sub, I don't have a list for him. He had, um, he had Trug, he had a Dankhold Trug boss, he had three single Dankhold Trug outs, and then he had a unit of, I think, he had two units of three Fellwaters, and then it was a unit of either six or nine, um, stone Stone guts, but whatever, whatever these ones, whatever the rock trolls are, um, I forget what they're called. But I think it was nine. I think it was nine of these. I did a lot of work to kill a bunch of trolls. <laughs> um, so this was on limited resources. So you know this the weird diagonal, um, the weird diagonal objectives, and once you have held an objective two turns in a row, you cannot hold it, you cannot uh, score it for the rest of the game, so you can contest it to stop the enemy from holding it, but you can't score it yourself. Um, so we had, these are impassables in the middle, I think they were both damned, which we never actually used. <laughs> I'm terrible about using damned terrain. Um, yeah, let's see. I know the first turn he got the five aboard, um, army wide to make it a little harder to kill him. Um, he took first turn. I think I made him take first turn. Um, I trapped, let's see, I trapped this terrain and this objective for my dirty tricks. I've been forgetting to talk about my dirty tricks. Um, I think I trapped things in the, in the previous game as well and against Frederick because um, he didn't have anything I could pick up with Disappearing Act. And he didn't have any shooting for um, Covered in Mud either. So I just trapped a couple things and it didn't do anything. It didn't really matter. I may have even rolled ones on the on the trap. <laughs> um, right. Anyway, so this game. Um, he did Surround and Destroy first turn. So I believe he just sent a Dank Hold off to each flank outside of his territory. And he kept one back. Um, and he got five points. So he took a few... Um, Took a few objectives. You can see these little coins. He was marking which ones like he had or couldn't do anymore, what have you. And the little black ones are marking where I had done. Um, I think we may have been taking these off once. We we had one on each, and maybe we were taking them off when we couldn't score them anymore. Um, so I started out with the one on my right, but not on the one on my left, so that I wouldn't deactivate both of the ones in my territory right off the bat. Um, Right. He did Surround and Destroy, he got three. I think he got the top right one um, that he started with, and then the, the two on the left here. Um, so he had... He may have only had two, actually. Right, because he only needed one two to get more, because I only had one. Um, but anyway, so he did Surround and Destroy. First turn, I did... Um, <laughs> I failed it. I did the tactic to do ten wounds to him, but not take ten back. Apparently I failed that because I have a little X next to it. I can't remember if I failed it because I didn't quite do enough or because I ended up taking 10 back. I think it must have just been that I didn't do enough wounds. I forget who I shot. I don't think I shot Trug. I may have just shot the Rot Guts to soften them up and ended up just not doing enough wounds to them because uh, of like the five of board and stuff um but whatever i failed that turn two he did lead into the maelstrom so who did he charge with i thought i charged here he must have charged 
So I had, I, I believe I had Gut Ripples. I, had, I think I had the, and no, Gut Ripples over here. I must have had, Hob, had Hobgrots here. Um, I must have had a Hobgrots in the middle that he charged with the Rock Guts and like something else. Unless, hold on. No, this, this must just be after like turn one or something. Let me think about this for a second. I, I remember the big, I remember big stuff that happened. I don't remember exactly what order it happened in. Um, he did surround. I did U10. I think maybe I did charge in. This might be turn one, actually. But I don't, I'm just thinking, how did this guy get behind him? <laughs> behind the, the dank hold instead of, maybe I just went up here in that charge. And that's awfully far for him to be turn one. Um, Important things that happened. Whether it was turn one or turn two, I had sneaky in my asmod gobsprack to be right up against the backside of the um, terrain here, and I oh maybe that was the heck. Sorry, I'm just looking at my oh my gosh, <laughs> that's why. Wow, I was so confused. All right, I was looking at the wrong game. <laughs> I was looking at the tactics for, for the wrong game. All right, all right. Uh, forget everything I said. That was about that was about game. The next game. Um, all right, let's let's actually look at the tactics for the correct game. All right. So turn one, he did do surround. Great. My turn one, I did do ten wounds, and I succeeded in this game. So we both had five points after turn one. So I, I'm sure I just shot a bunch of rock guts and blah, blah, blah. Um, then I got the double, right. I took the one, two double. So I was kind of set up. Um, I had some hub grouts here. I had the sludge raker was coming up. I had gut rippers over here. Um, I had hub grouts over here. He might've killed them with the dank hold. Um, and right, this was the turn that I was talking about. I sneaky my asthma gobsprack up right behind the terrain. And then in the move phase, I just moved him over. So then in the charge phase, I just smashed the Loon Shrine to roll. So this turn, I was like, I want to get rid of the Loon Shrine, and I want to get rid of the Rock Guts, and I want to tie this stuff up with the Gut Rippos and hold this objective. Um, the um, Nash Tooth, I was like, he might die to the Dank Hold. I'm not sure. I don't know how that's going to go. But I do know that they're very swingy because they have low numbers and high damage attacks. So anyway, I sent the Nash Truth in. Um, yeah, so my turn, my turn two, when I got the double, I did let into the Maelstrom. So I charged like the Nash Truth in. I believe I charged in the Hobgrots up here for Battle Line one. Um, I charged in the Sludge Raker into the Rock Guts. I charged in these Gut Rippers in. I'm like, all right, just charge, I'm just send it at this turn. I'm charging everything. I'm sure something will be live at the end of the turn to get me my tactic. <laughs> um, you can see I did, like I said, I did end up smashing the Loon Shrine with Gobsprack, so that was great because I was like, all right, if I get rid of the, if I get rid of these nine Rock Guts, five aren't coming back out of the Loon Shrine. That was one of my main goals was to smash that with Gobsprack. Um, so I went in. Um, you know, I've I've killed a bunch of Rock Guts at this point. There's four of the nine left. Um, I maybe I charged him with Hobgrods here actually. Whatever the Hobgrods over here are dead, but he didn't kill the Nash Tooth. I did some wounds to the Dank Hold. Um, I must not have. I didn't kill it this turn. I think I killed it next turn with the Nash Tooth. Um, and then the big. You can see I was like Mystic Shielded on the Sludge Raker and poisoned. I had Finest Hour on the. Nash Tooth. Um, the important thing up here was, right, so I charged in the Hobgrots as well, and the important thing was that he couldn't pile in all of his Rock Guts to attack my Sludge Raker. He got like maybe two Rock Guts attacking the Sludge Raker, or one, so he mostly had to attack the Hobgrots this turn, because I wanted, you know, I didn't want to just charge in the Sludge Raker and have the Rock Guts beat him to death. That would be sad. Um, the big surprise for me was in this combat up here, the Dankhold Trogboss killed like nine 
gut rippers or something. <laughs> like something absurd that I did not expect. Um, so I was I was suddenly very worried about this unit of gut rippers just evaporating and losing this point. Um, but I think I I think I spent a point for battle shock, a CP for battle shock on them. Um, yeah, story story of turn two was just shooting a bunch of stuff, um, going in with a bunch of units, getting my five points. We're tied 10-10 at this point. Uh, sorry, or sorry. I'm, a, I'm at 10, he's at 5. His turn, he does let into the Maelstrom. Uh, so he charges... Um, he charges the Dankhold and Trug into Gobsprack. And I'm like, alright, this was... For me, I was like, I'm just sacrificing Gobsprack to get the Loon Shrine, because, like, he doesn't have any casting. I don't really care if I dispel things with Gobsprack. Like... I'm okay sacrificing him to get the Loon Shrine and not have a bunch of trolls come out of it. So he charges both of them in. I'm like, all right, cool, that's fine. But also I was like, you're probably going to smoke him. And then if those are the things you charged in, you'll fail your tactic. <laughs> um, the Fellwaters, I think... I think the Fellwaters might have also charged Gobsprack here. And then the Dankhold charged these um, Gut Rippers. He may have ended up charging the Fellwaters into the into these Gut Rippers as well. There was there was a good chance in my mind that he was actually going to fail his tactic just by killing everything that he charged. So I was like, sweet. I was like, double charge Gobsprack, kill him, get him out of the way. These Gut Rippers, sure, charge him, kill him, get it, get him out of combat, like, and fail your tactic. That's kind of what I was hoping for. Um, funny thing is, he complete he like super whiffed with Trug and the Dankhold and did not kill Gobsprack that turn. So I was like, oh, okay. Um, you're getting your tactic, but I guess it's good that Gobsprack's alive. And then Gobsprack did like a bunch of wounds back to um Trug or the Dankhold, I forget which one. <laughs> so so Gobsprack gritted up and didn't die. Uh, but he did get his five points, so he got um he took this bottom left objective back from me. He had this one, this one, and I think the one in the top corner still. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, he got his tactic. He didn't kill the things he went in on. Um, I think there might have even been, I think there were a few gut rippers left too. Um, so then he did not get the double back until turn five, which was great. Um, so I got to go turn three first again. Um, I did bait and trap, so I believe I retreated with Gobsprack out to here. Um, I think I retreated with Gut Rippers that were left over to here for the bait. And then uh, I don't know what all I charged in for the trap part of bait and trap. Maybe... I don't know. Must have been something. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if maybe this is when... Oh, I think in his turn, right. So I think in his turn, the Nash Reef actually killed the Dankhold here. So I was able to go and charge in over here with the Nash Tooth. Um, so I did that. If I'm remembering right. I may not be remembering right. Whatever. I did, I did bait and trap somehow. And got it. Um, also in this turn, so in his... In his turn two, you know, he rolled his four dice for Trug, and the power he chose was the, um, the plus one Rend army wide, which I thought was a really odd and bad decision because my army doesn't have army saves anyway, or armor saves anyway. Um, so that was a very weird decision. Um, I think he, I forget what he rolled. He probably could have picked either the five up ward or the only sixes hit for shooting. Either of which would have been a better choice, um, but I don't recall 100%. So anyway, so he went the extra Ren, so that in my turn, I blew up Trug. I killed Trug. I was like, great, this is amazing. You're not going to get your army-wide powers anymore. I think I cleaned up this Dankhold. Um, that Dankhold maybe was alive, but regardless, um, I got Bait and Trap. I got four points. Um, I may have I may have finished off um I may have finished off the rock cuts in this turn. 
but I don't remember. Um, then his turn four, his sorry, his turn three, he didn't do a tactic and got three points. So I got four to his three. So I must, I got my tactic. I controlled one, two, but not more. His turn, he controlled one, two more, but didn't do a tactic. Um, and then at this point, like a lot of the objectives are getting turned off for both of us. Um, turn four for me, I did sneak up. So I must have, I must have pretty much cleared the stuff over here and like retreated with these or something. Um, so I did sneak up. I got, I guess only one objective, but I got sneak up for three points. He did intimidate and got no objectives for two points in his turn. And then he got the double back finally. So he did control more under the light of the moon. And I think the moon had finally moved to the center. It was in this corner for like most of the game and then finally moved. Um, so he got four that turn, but then I, I I had some tactic to do. I didn't write it down, but I got five points last turn. So it ended up being 22 to 20 me. And I think that includes my And 17, 22. That doesn't include my grand strat, so maybe I didn't quite get it. That surprises me. I think, maybe, I think the dank called Trog boss was alive at the end of the game. I know maybe this Fellwater unit was alive, and then maybe, maybe like this dank hold was alive. So either I miscounted and forgot my grand strat, or three things were alive. Probably three things were alive. Uh, so it was a close game. It was 22 to 20 me. Um, Nashtooth was a big MVP. He came over and killed this Trog, the, the dank hold, and he also wiped the unit of Fellwaters over like two turns. So he just kind of held down this flank by himself. He's got Ribbus, got their asses kicked by the Trog boss, which I <laughs> was worse than I was expecting. But yeah, the big things in the game, um, I was happy I had played my friend Jake um, with his non-Trog Trogoth list with the nine Trogoths, because um, not for that, I, I may not have remembered that they could come back out of the Loon Shrine, because it surprised me when I played him. I was like, wait, you can bring you can bring five Rock Guts back out of the Loon Shrine if they die? So so I knew to sacrifice Gobsprack and kill that. Um, blow up the, the Shrine before I killed the nine Rock Guts. Um, so that worked out well, and I mean, he has a very tough army, so it, it was difficult to kill everything, but um, I did. I was able to outplay a little bit on the objectives and stuff, and I got a second win. Um, so I came out of groups having gone two and three. Um, again, this one was against the substitute, um, the local guy Dave, who was a good guy. Um, but you know, I don't know, I'm not gonna put it. Whatever. Maybe a tiny asterisk on the win. Just it wasn't one of the world's qualifying people. It was the substitute. Um, but big props to him for stepping up and um, subbing in for Josh so that I did actually get to play a game at all. <laughs> it would have been horrible to have a bye um, after traveling to Atlanta. So yeah, that was day two. Um, so yeah, I played, so I had played Damien from France. I played, oh my god, my cat's on my notebook. Um, Right, I played Victor, right. Round, so round two, I played Victor, who I believe was representing... Um, does it say on here who we're representing? Right, it says US. Let me look. Where's Victor? Right, so Victor was... right. So Victor lives in, like, Indiana or something. He lives in the US, but he was representing Poland. So um, I'd seen his army at Nova. Uh, it's a very nicely painted KO army. Um, so I was like, oh, I recognize this army. Oh, you, you know, whatever. You live in the U.S. So I didn't play somebody who actually came from overseas, but he was representing Poland. Um, and then I played Frederick, who lives in the U.S. So, yeah, I played, first two rounds, I played non-U.S. people, and then I basically played uh, U.S. people through the rest of, um, basically through the rest of the tournament. So through the rest of the group stage, and then... Um, through the rest of the tournament. So I played, I'll, I'll talk about that in the next video. Uh, but yeah, so so I got out of groups with two wins. Um, I don't think that was, I don't think that put me last in the group. Um, I 
can just see, I guess. Um, right, so David Salava only won one game in our group. Uh, Duncan only won one game in our group. Um, Makram only won one in our group. Why does this say for group four, group four? I don't know why he popped up under group two, United States, when I searched for group four, but whatever. Uh, he was not in there. Uh, Aaron won two games with Ida Death. I won two games with Cruel Boys. Jason Wang won two with Ida Death. Frederick won two with Sylvaneth. Uh, John Anderson won two with Ida Death. And Christoph won two with Seraphon. And then we get up into two games, two wins and a tie coming out of groups and then the wins. So yeah, so I, I don't know. I was in I was in decent company in my group with a bunch of people with only two wins or one win. Um, so I was pretty happy that like, you know, I, I wasn't, I didn't, I didn't just get blasted off, you know, blasted off every game with my crew boys. Um, I was not last coming out of our group. Um, I, don't know. I was pretty happy with that. I was like, at this point, I've won two wins, won two games rather. I have two wins, um, which is pretty good. Uh, my goal for the whole thing was to go four wins. So obviously that didn't end up panning out. But after after pools, I was like, all right, I've got two. I need to win two of the next three games. Like that's doable. So I was in I was in decent spirits having won my my last two games with pools. Um, yeah, and I will, uh, I'll talk about the other games, the last three games in the next video. Um, what else happened Friday? Oh, right, the reveal show was Friday. So that was very cool. Um, I, I think I messed up the timing on this. Uh, there was, um, so there was like an open social and then the reveal show. And I think I thought both of them started at nine. I think the, the the social thing actually started at like seven or something, which I just completely missed. I like went out to dinner um, by myself, just like across the street, um, just to get some decompression time and have a really good old fashioned, <laughs> which is great. Um, I went to dinner and I like told my waitress, I was like, oh yeah, you know, like I'm ready to order right away. I have to be back over there by nine for this thing, for the reveal show. Um, Got some tips on things to do in Atlanta. Um, then I went over there and I was like, oh, <laughs> whoops, I think I missed the social. Um, so unfortunate, I didn't get as much time to, to mingle with people. But then the reveal show was super awesome. Obviously, you've all seen the things that were revealed by now. But uh, Ushurin, 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 whatever. The Summer King and all the, all the fact stuff revealed is super awesome. Uh, it was cool to be in the room when they were just like, revealing it live and there's 300 Warhammer nerds in the room all cheering. Um, obviously AOS people we were, we're always outnumbered by 40k people, but that's fine. Um, I didn't think it was funny. They're like the big the big surprise at the end, like the big the big extra cool reveal, supposedly on school spec, um, was like this Titus st statue from Weta workshop, Weta workshop in New Zealand. Um, and like the Weta guy, a couple of the Weta people were there um, to help reveal it. And it's like a one to six, you know, size, whatever. It's like two feet tall or something. This the statue of a space marine. And I was like, people excited about this? I was like, I don't care. I, uh, I don't care about a space marine statue. And like, honestly, it seems like everybody, like, I don't think anybody was excited about that as much as they were excited about like the new models and stuff. So I felt a little bad for the Weta guys. Like, I think there were some times where we were all supposed to like cheer and clap and everyone was just like, okay, well, I guess, <laughs> I don't know. It's some, it was some, some expensive statue. Um, the winner, the winner on the 40 K side was going to get the first produced of these. So not the master, um, but the, the first limited edition, whatever Titus thing that, they're making only a thousand of them, and it was just kind of like, yeah, whatever, man. I, this is not something any of us care about. That's kind of my impression. Like even the forty k people were like, oh yeah, cool, okay, hooray, I guess. Um, but anyway, would have been cooler if they announced, I don't know, like new wood elf models for for the old world. I don't know. I'm very biased. <laughs> the Tomb King stuff they they revealed was cool. Anyway, so that was Friday. Um, I'll finish up 
talking about Saturday, Sunday uh, in my last part three uh, video. But for now, take it easy, friends. See you all later.